Hi and welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to crochet these beautiful sunflower pots or baskets that you can use as a flower ornament or you can use them to store your sunflower coasters. They are super easy and quick to make and I bet you're going to have lots of fun making them for yourself or for your friends. You can crochet along with me, but if you prefer, you can also get the written pattern in my Etsy shop and I will leave a link in the description down below. Before we start, I would like to share the measurements and each coaster measures approximately 16 centimeters. You can of course make your coasters bigger or smaller if you use different yarn. So I hope you're excited about making them. Grab your hooks and let's get stitching. To make these coasters, you're going to need any category for worsted yarn. I have used these Paris by Drops, but you can use any yarn you have at home. I really like using cotton as they have more durability than acrylic yarn. And you're going to need a 4.5 crochet hook. pair of scissors and a tapestry needle to weave in your ends. You're going to start round number one by making a magic ring and making it really slowly so you can have a look how to make it. And I'm going to make two chains and these two chains do not count as a stitch they do not count as a double crochet and after that I'm going to work 12 double crochet into the ring. Here I've worked the 12 double crochet. So now I'm gonna pull the yarn tail to close the ring. And to close the first round, I'm gonna make one slip stitch to the first double crochet of the round. And this is round number one completed. We're going to start round number two by making five chains. Three chains count as the first double crochet and two chains count as a space. Then I'm going to go to the next space and I'm going to work one double crochet and two chains. So there is my first double crochet and I'm going to do two chains and then I'm going to repeat this sequence 11 times. So I'm going to work one double crochet and two chains 11 times all around my work.
Here I'm working the last double crochet of the round. Now this is the last two chains. And to finish this round, I'm gonna locate the third chain from the initial five chain and I'm gonna make one slip stitch. And this is round number two completed. And as you can see, we should have 12 double crochet. So here I'm counting, making sure I have the 12 double crochet separated by two chains. To start round number three, I'm gonna move with a slip stitch to the first two chain space and I'm gonna chain three. These three chains do count as the first double crochet. So now I'm gonna make two double crochet all into the same space and I'm gonna make one chain. So here I have three double crochet, including the first three chains, and I'm gonna make one chain. And now I'm gonna repeat this sequence. I'm gonna work three double crochet all into the two chain space and make one chain for 11 times, all around your work. I'm now almost at the end of the round. I only have to work one last space. So I'm working three double crochet all into the same space. I'm gonna make one chain and to close the round, I'm gonna make one slip stitch into the third chain from the initial three chains. And I'm gonna make one chain to secure the yarn and I'm gonna fasten off. So this is our third round completed. As you can see, we have three double crochet all into the same space, separated by one chain. We're going to bring the new color to start round number four. In this case, because I'm making the sunflower, I'm gonna use yellow. And you're gonna attach this new color to any chain space from the previous round. And as you know, I always like attaching my new color by making a knot so I make sure the yarn won't come out. And I'm gonna make one chain and one single crochet all into the same space. And I'm gonna work one chain. Now for this round only, you're gonna work in between the spaces of the double crochet. So I'm gonna go to that space and I'm gonna make one double crochet. I'm gonna make two chains and I'm gonna work another double crochet in between the space of the double crochet. I'm gonna make one chain and I'm gonna work one single crochet in that space. And I'm gonna change one. And now I'm gonna repeat this sequence all around 11 times. So I'm gonna repeat this sequence 11 times. So here I'm working the double crochet and chaining two. And remember to always work in between the spaces of the double crochet. And the single crochet is always gonna be in the one chain space, as you can see here. And this is how we are creating the little arches for our sunflower petals. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue working this sequence 
until I get to the end of the round. Now I'm almost at the end of the round. I completed the sequence 11 times. So I'm going to make one double crochet, chain two, and work another double crochet into that space. Work one chain. And I'm going to close the round by making one slip stitch into the first single crochet of the round. And this is round number four completed. And as you can see, we've created like little arches where we are gonna create the sunflower petals. And you should have 12 little arches. We're going to start round number five by making one chain and one single crochet all into the same space. And I'm gonna make one chain. And now I'm gonna work the first petal of the sunflower. For this, I'm gonna make four double crochet all into the same space. And I'm gonna work one picot stitch. For this, I'm gonna make three chains. I'm gonna go back to the first one and make one single crochet into that space. And this is our picot stitch created. And now I'm gonna finish the petal by making four double crochet all into the same space. So in total, I'm gonna have four double crochet, a picot stitch and four double crochet all into the same space. Here you can see the first petal and after that, I'm gonna make one chain and I'm gonna make one single crochet into the single crochet from the previous round and make another chain. And I'm gonna repeat this sequence 11 times all around our work to create the petals for our sunflower. So I'm gonna make four double crochet all into the same space and I'm gonna work one picot stitch. For this, I'm gonna make three chains and I'm gonna go to the first chain and work one single crochet into that chain space. And I'm gonna work four double crochet all into the same space to create the petal of the sunflower. And after completing the four double crochet, I'm gonna make one chain. Here you can see the petal. And I'm gonna make one single crochet into that single crochet from the previous round and make another chain. Now I'm gonna go ahead and continue working this sequence until I completed all the petals of the sunflower. After completing all the sequence 11 times, 
I'm gonna work for the work crochet in the last two chain space from the round. And I'm also gonna work one pick of stitch and four more double crochet all into the same space to complete the last petal of the round. After working the last double crochet of the petal, I'm gonna make one chain and I'm gonna finish the round by making a slip stitch to the first single crochet of the round. And I'm gonna change one just to secure our yarn and I'm gonna cut the yarn. This is the last round of our coaster. So you're all done. You've made your coaster, congratulations. By now your coaster should have 12 petals in total. So make sure you count them and you have those 12 petals that made up the flower coaster. And the only thing left to do is to weave in all the ends. So for that, I'm just gonna undo that last chain that I did at the end of the round, just to hide the ends in a way that you can't really see them. For this, I'm gonna use a tapestry needle and I'm gonna imitate making another stitch in order to close our work and then after doing this as you can see in the video I'm gonna turn my work around and I'm gonna try to hide this end in the back of our work We're going to start the first round of our basket by making a magic ring and we're gonna make one chain and in this case this chain won't count as a stitch. Now I'm gonna work six single crochet all into the ring. Here I'm working the last single crochet of the round and when I have the six single crochet all worked I'm gonna pull the yarn tail to close the ring and I'm not gonna join the rounds I'm just gonna continue working in a spiral so I'm gonna go to the first single crochet of the previous round and I'm gonna make one single crochet and I'm gonna use a stitch marker to keep track of this stitch of the first stitch of the round and I'm gonna make an increase so I'm gonna work another single crochet all into the same stitch and I'm gonna continue working this way all along the round so I'm gonna work two single crochet in each single crochet from the previous round and by the end of the round we are going to have 12 single crochet in total. So I'm going to go ahead and continue working two single crochet in each stitch from the previous round until I reach the stitch marker.
Here I have the 12 single crochet. So this is the end of round number two. And to start round number three, I'm gonna remove the stitch marker. And I'm gonna work one single crochet into that stitch. This will be my first stitch of the round. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a stitch marker to keep track of the stitch again. And then I'm gonna work two single crochet into the following stitch. And this will be an increase. And now I'm gonna repeat this sequence. I'm gonna work one single crochet and two single crochet into the next stitch until I reach the stitch marker. Here I have two stitches left before the stitch marker, so I'm gonna work one single crochet, and in the last stitch, I'm gonna work two single crochet. So by the end of round three, we should have 18 single crochet in total. To start round number four, I'm gonna remove the stitch marker and I'm gonna work one single crochet into that stitch. And again, I'm gonna mark that stitch. And then I'm gonna work another single crochet. And I'm gonna work one increase into the following stitch. So remember as an increase is two single crochet into the same space. And then I'm gonna repeat this sequence. I'm gonna work one single crochet into the next two stitches. And then I'm gonna work two single crochet into the following stitch. So here I'm working one single crochet into the next two stitches. And then I'm working an increase. That is two single crochet all into the same space. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue working this sequence until I reach the stitch mark. Here I'm working the last increase of the round before the stitch marker. And just a little tip, before the stitch marker, we are always gonna work an increase. And by the end of round four, we should have 24 stitches in total. To start round number five, I'm gonna remove the stitch marker and I'm gonna place a single crochet into that stitch, into that space and then I'm gonna put the stitch marker back in order to keep track of the first stitch of the round and then I'm gonna work one single crochet into the next two stitches so I will have three single crochets and then I will work an increase. So I will work two single crochet into the same space. And then I'm going to repeat this sequence. I'm going to work one single crochet into the next three stitches and I'm going to work an increase into the following stitch. So here I'm working the two single crochet into the same space. And this is the sequence I'm going to repeat along the round.
Here I'm working the last increase of the round, and by the end of round five, we should have 30 single crochet in total. And now to start round number six, I'm just going to repeat the same steps than before. I'm going to remove the stitch marker and I'm going to place a single crochet into that space. Then I'm going to put the stitch marker back in order to keep track of the first stitch of the round. And now I'm going to work one single crochet into the next three stitches. So after working the three single crochet, I will have four single crochet. And then I will work an increase into the next stitch. And then I'm going to repeat this sequence. I'm going to work one single crochet into the next four stitches. And I'm going to work one increase in the following stitch. And I'm going to repeat this sequence until the end of the round. Now I'm working the last increase of this round and by the end of round six, I should have 36 stitches in total. Now for round seven, I'm gonna start with one single crochet. I'm gonna put the stitch marker back. And then I'm gonna work one single crochet into the next four stitches. And I should have five single crochet before the first increase of the round. So after working the four single crochet, I'm gonna work my first increase of the round. And then I'm gonna repeat this sequence along the round. So I'm gonna work one single crochet into the next five stitches. And then I'm gonna work one increase into the following space. So here I'm working the five single crochet and this is the second increase of the round. So I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat this sequence along the round. I'm now working the last increase of the round and by the end of round seven, I should have 42 stitches in total. And this is gonna be the last round of increases. So this is gonna be the base of our basket. And now in the next round, I'm just gonna work single crochet through the back loop of the stitch. So instead of going through both loops, I'm just gonna go through the back loop of the stitch and as always, I'm going to mark the first stitch just to keep track of the rounds. And for the first round without increases, as I said before, I'm going to work only on the back loop of the stitch. Here you can see that I have like two loops. I'm just going to grab the further away from me, which is the back loop of the stitch. And this is going to be the first round for our basket, for the body of the basket, because we finished the base, so now we're working on the body. And for the first round, we're only going to work through the back loop of the stitches. So I'm going to continue making single crochet through the back loop only until the end of the round, which is going to be until I reach the stitch mark. Here I'm working in the last single crochet of the round. And by the end of this round, we should have 42 single crochet all around. And now for round number nine and all the following rounds, we're gonna work a single crochet, a normal single crochet, taking both loops in each stitch available. And as always, I'm gonna keep track of the first stitch of the round in order to be able to count the rounds. So this is gonna be round number nine. And as you can see, I'm just working normal single crochet 
all around the basket. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue working single crochets until I reach the end of the round. Here I'm working the last single crochet of the round and as always I'm going to move the stitch marker and continue working in rounds and I'm going to work in total 14 rounds so this is going to be round number 10 and I'm going to continue working until I reach round number 14 and I will continue working normal single crochet without increasing or decreasing just taking both loops of the stitch so i will continue working in the round and this is how your basket should be looking by now so i'll go ahead and complete the rounds until i reach round number 14 in order to complete the basket now i'm working the last single crochet of round number 14 and here i'm not going to close a stitch with the same color i'm going to bring the next color which is color d and this is the green one and i'm going to close that stitch using the green color in order to make the transition of colors a bit easier now i'm going to remove the stitch marker because we know that's going to be our first stitch and I'm gonna make one single crochet into the next stitch and then that's gonna be our first single crochet of the round and then I'm gonna miss two stitches and I'm gonna work four double crochet all into the same space so I will cre be creating a shell like the ones I did in the sunflowers. So here I have two double crochets and I'm gonna work two more all into the same space. And then I'm gonna work three chains and I'm gonna go back to the first change and work a single, sorry, a slip stitch. And that will be a picot stitch. And I'm gonna repeat the same. I'm gonna work four double crochet all into the same space. And this way I will be creating the shells for the border of our basket. Now this is the first shell completed, as you can see. And now I'm gonna miss two stitches. So one, two, and I'm gonna make one single crochet into the next stitch. And then I'm gonna repeat this sequence. I'm gonna miss again two spaces and I'm gonna work one shell. This shell would be four double crochet all into the same space plus one picot stitch and then four double crochet all into the same space.
here I have another shell or petal completed and then I'm gonna miss again two stitches and I'm gonna work one single crochet into the following one and then I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat this sequence all along our basket until I reach the first single crochet of the round. Here I'm working the last double crochet of the round and I have all my shells completed. So now I'm just gonna finish this round by making a slip stitch to the first single crochet of the round. Now the basket is completed. This is the last round. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the yarn and then I can start weaving in all the ends using a tapestry needle. And this is the way I like finishing the rounds to make the beginning of the round not so visible. So I create like a fake stitch and I make sure the thread is well hidden behind our work so it doesn't unravel at the end. So I go through the stitches maybe two to three times, but because this is like a project I'm not going to wear, it's just going to be standing on its own. It will be okay if I do it two times. So I'm going to go ahead and finish in weaving all the ends and make sure our basket looks perfect for displaying in our house. Or if you want to use them for gifting to your family or even for selling make sure they are top notch.
So here is the basket finished and it looks so pretty after you hide all the ends. So I hope you had fun making this tutorial with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye!